Traditional designers have been taught that color is a recipe of light or ink, and it's described in terms like RGB or CMYK. Now, design applications like Adobe Illustrator use these same methods to describe color because they were developed with designers in mind. However, web browsers use a completely different method for describing color, and it's known as hexadecimal. The hexadecimal system is based on RGB, so you will want to use the same method when you're selecting color inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, as you may or may not know, RGB stands for red, green, and blue. And these are the three colors used by all screens to display color. Now, varying the amounts of each of these colors will result in the millions of colors that you can present on a screen. These amounts can range from 0 to 255 for each of the three colors. Now, when all three colors have equal values, you may not see any color at all, but rather a level of gray, anywhere from black to white. An RGB color recipe is typically written like 240, 90, 40, where the first number represents the value of red, the second green, and the third blue. Now, hexadecimal color recipes are very similar, but are written as a single value and can contain letters. Now, it's not necessary for you to completely understand the hexadecimal color system in order to take advantage of it in Adobe Illustrator, but it may help you to understand color on the web if you have some basic knowledge of this unique way to describe color. First, hexadecimal colors will always begin with a hashtag symbol followed by six digits. Now these six digits can be broken down into three pairs, each pair representing one of the three RGB colors. They will always be described in order, red, green, and then blue. Instead of zero to 255, hexadecimal uses zero to nine and the letters A to F. So the same color described earlier in the RGB recipe would be written as hashtag F0, 5A, 2, 8 in hexadecimal code. <laughs> Still confused? I don't doubt it. The hexadecimal system is not a human-friendly way to describe color. Thankfully, though, Adobe Illustrator has a more intuitive way for you to select your colors. Now, before I begin selecting colors and mixing colors here in my Adobe Illustrator, document. I want to make sure what color mode this document is currently working in. And that's pretty easy to do. If I look up here in the top left corner of the document window, I can see the document tab. And it's going to give me the name of the document web color. It's going to give me the zoom percentage here at 58%. And then this first set of letters here, it says CMYK. Well, that is the current document color mode. And that's not accurate for my web graphics. Yes, I can mix colors in this mode, but the colors will shift when I put them on the web because it uses a different color mode. So let's go ahead and modify this document so that we're working in the right color mode. To do this, we're gonna go up to the file menu. Towards the bottom of this menu, you will actually see document color mode. And we can see that we're currently using CMYK color. Now, why did it choose this? Well, that is based upon the preset that I chose for this particular document, but we can override that preset. So I'm gonna choose RGB color. Now my document is using the web specific RGB color mode. And there's not much of a change here right now because I just had black on the screen. Let's take a look back over here in the color panel. Now the color panel is still using the CMYK sliders here to mix color. And you could work this way, but that's probably not very conducive to your workflow. So let's change that as well. In the upper right-hand corner of the color panel, there is a small icon, it's four little lines. This is your panel menu. And if you click on it, you will reveal the different color modes in which this panel will work. So I want to use the RGB mode. I'm going to select that. And now my sliders are RGB. Now just below the B slider or the blue slider, I will find a small field here. And it's got a little hashtag in front of it. And in this case, it's got 010101. 
This is the hexadecimal code. So if I knew what the hexadecimal code of the color was, I could highlight this value, type in those six digits, and it would give me the color. But if you don't know what this hexadecimal color is, you can always use the little sliders up here to add the red, green, and blue together. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go back out into my artwork here, and I'm going to select this little black box here. I'm going to go back over to the color panel. I want to make sure that I am working on the fill color of this particular object. And then if I grab the red slider here, notice that the slider goes from black to bright red. In fact, all of these do the same thing. They go from a black color to a bright, um, really intense, you know, red, green, or blue color. So let's say I want to add some red to this. I'm going to just drag this red slider to the right, and let's say we'll just stop somewhere along in here. As soon as I release the slider, my object that I have selected has changed to that same color. Now, if I go ahead and add some of the green to it, notice that these sliders, the green and blue slider, have changed. They're no longer black to green and black to blue. They are, well, red, what my current color is, to a bright green or red to a magenta color here. So these sliders here are dynamic. They will update as you move the individual sliders. So see how those colors on those bars are changing? That's because I'm adding green and now blue to this object. And it's mixing up this color. So it's a great visual way for you to mix colors. Now, below these sliders, you also have this little rainbow here. It's a little spectrum. And if I wanted to mix a color in here, maybe just uh, let's take a look at what an orange would look like. I can just click kind of in this orangey area, and it will update those sliders to represent that color. Now, I actually have the recipe that I want to use for my orange color here. And we can see it's uh, 240 red, 90 green, and 40 blue. So what I can do is back over here in the color panel, I can highlight that red value, type in the number. I'll hit the tab key to jump to the next field, the green field, type in that number, hit the tab key again, and type in my final number. Now, I'm going to hit tab one last time, and that's going to jump down to the hexadecimal field. So now I'm representing that kind of reddish orange color and Right there inside of the hexadecimal field is the exact hexadecimal code value for this color. So as you can see, Illustrator makes pretty light work of working with hexadecimal colors. In fact, you really don't have to work with them at all. You can focus on the more familiar red, green, and blue sliders and then copy this hexadecimal color into your documentation or hand it off to your web developer.